Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Learn ES6. Uh, my name is Ryan Christiani. In this episode, we're going to take a look at set and map in ES6. Now, this is map, not like the map uh, method on an array. This is map of the new data structure available to us in ES6. So in the past, uh, in JavaScript, if we want a simple uh, kind of container, a data structure for data, we've just used object literals. So let's take the example of a person. We'll say person equals uh, uh, object literal. We'll give it the name Ryan, and it's pretty straightforward, right? But there is a bit of a problem here. This person actually comes with a whole bunch of other properties. Uh, object literals, when we uh, create a new object literal, it actually has a prototype chain, and it has all of these different methods on it and stuff like that. Not that there's anything really wrong with that for us in our case here, but maybe we want something that's uh, very stripped down for a basic. In other languages, like uh, Ruby and, and Python and stuff like that, there are things called hashes or dictionaries. Uh, some languages also implement a map as well. Uh, but these are data structures that are really straightforward, very basic, and they don't have a lot of stuff going on inside of them. In ES6, we have the ability to create a new map uh, and a map, or sorry, and a set. Uh, and these are two things. So the map is a simple key value pair uh, data structure uh, that has, well, it's not that simple. It has a bunch of methods and a way for us to sort of iterate and enumerate over it. Uh, there's also the set, which is a set of unique values. The cool thing about these is that the, the, the keys that we can pass into them are going to be uh, basically anything. We can pass in a string as a key. We can also pass in uh, functions uh, and all kinds of things like that. And I'm going to show you um, a really cool article because I don't want to just uh, steal what this person says, but I'll show you a cool article on how we can use maps, for example, to cache uh, uh, DOM elements and stuff like that. That being said, uh, let's actually get started. So we have a person uh, object. Let's instead create a person map. So we say const new uh, const person equals new map. And what we put in between the, the parentheses here is, first of all, we can put nothing, which we're going to do here. But I'll show you in a second. We actually put in uh, an array that has the, the keys and the values that we want to put into it. So how do we add to a map? Well, the great thing about maps is that there's a very straightforward uh, API for uh, setting and getting values. Uh, unlike an, uh, a regular object, you can set up getters and setters in an object, but you have to kind of do that work. In this case, a map just has it for us. So if we want to have person have a name, we could say person.set name, uh, and we'll put in my name as the second value. So the first value, the first argument here in the set method is the key. The second one is the value. And we can see that we can get it by saying person.get name. And we get Ryan back. Pretty cool. Uh, if we want to set uh, other methods or sorry, other properties, we simply just follow the same uh, same standard. Uh, yeah, that's right. And then we can also say, you know, get name or get age. Sorry. Cool. So this is pretty neat. Uh, you can also, if you wanted to, have passed these in uh, up here. So the way it works is if you pass in a multi-dimensional array where each array, uh, each element inside of the first array that you're patch passing in has uh, the first element of it, the key that you want, and then second, the value that you want. So if we wanted to do that same thing, we could do something like this. And then similarly, we can just go console.log person.set, uh, sorry, person.get, uh, let's say age. We'll get 31. You probably won't see this too much because the idea in sort of using maps is you don't know exactly what you want to store right away. You kind of want to create a map to start storing uh, uh, values as you go, arbitrary values as you go. So that's pretty cool. Uh, sets are very similar. However, sets are just a way of, uh, of us being able to store uh, unique values. So unlike a map, there are no keys. There are no, uh, uh, it's no property. It's just like a single value. So for example, if we say const, let's say locations equals, and then we could have an array of locations like Toronto. Uh, Toronto's got a O at the end there. And let's just say Montreal. Let's just put two for now. We could say const, uh, let's say location set equals new set. And we could actually pass in locations like that. And if we did console.log location set dot get, uh, we could say get Toronto. 
and it would uh, not get. Oh, sorry, uh, has, because we, we can't just get one value. Oop, there we go. It has Toronto, that's true. So uh, the idea of a set is that it allows us to kind of just store arbitrary uh, information. Uh, we can do it by passing an array to the value or to the, the set, or uh, we can use the add method. So I could go location set dot add, and I could say, let's add New York. And then if I wanted to check to see if it had that value, I could say, does it have New York? And it does, and it says true. So that's pretty neat. Uh, but we've just seen that we can add and uh, get values from map and set. What's the what's the deal here? Well, let's go back to map. So let me just create my, my person map again here. Uh, we'll say equals new uh, map. And we'll actually just pass in the values again up here. So we'll say name is Ryan and age is 31. And we'll just remove all this extra stuff here. Okay, so uh, how would we maybe enumerate through these? So uh, before, if we wanted to kind of like go through um, a uh, an object, for example, we had to use the for in loop. Uh, in our case here, we have a different way of doing that. We have the uh, for of loop, and we actually have a couple different ways we can do that. One thing I do want to point out really quickly here is that uh, Maps, you can actually get the size of the map. If you've ever wanted to get like an array, or sorry, an object, a regular object, you wanted to find out how many elements were in that object, you always had to kind of find your own way to do it. You'd have to write a function that maybe like loops through all of its own properties and says, oh, there's like 12 properties here. The cool thing about uh, maps is that we have the size property. And it'll actually tell us how many properties are inside of the map, which is pretty neat. So. Let's keep going here. So uh, if we wanted to enumerate through this, how would we do that? Well, there's a couple ways. There is a for each method. So we could say person dot for each. And it gets past uh, two things. So it's going to get past the value. And it's going to get past the key. So the console dot log the value. And the key here. We'll actually see that the uh, it returns Ryan is the value and the key is name. 31 is the value and the key is age. So we can actually just uh, iterate over this pretty easily using the for each. There is also another way we can do this. We can use the for of uh, um, loop. So if we say for of and then let, let's say key, we'll call this key because this is just what we're going to call it right now, but this could be anything. Of and then here's the interesting thing. We can't just say person here. So with maps and sets and uh, actually a new protocol, I believe that's introduced in ES6 explicitly, uh, is the iterator protocol. And uh, an iterator object is something like a map, a set. We'll see a little bit later in the next coming upcoming videos. A generator uh, is a type of iterator. Uh, it is a an object that implements the next method. And I'll show you what that means. So uh, first, let's say this, person.keys. So this creates a new iterator object that allows us to iterate over it using the for of loop in this case. And it's going to give us for every element in there, it's going to give us the key value. So if I console.log key here, I'm going to clear this side of the screen here and hit run, you see that we get those keys. It's pretty cool. There's actually a couple different kinds of iterators we can create here. So this is simply just giving us the key itself. There's also one called values, which if you guessed it, will give us just the values. So it'll iterate through the object and instead of providing us the, the key for the property, it'll just give us the value. It's pretty neat. Um, but maybe we want to know what the key and the value are. So uh, what we could do is this, we could say uh, person.entries and this will create a new type of uh, uh, value that's returned. It's actually going to be an array. And let me show you what it looks like first, and I'll show you a fun trick we can do here. So if you take a look, it returns us an, an array that has the name and uh, the, the value stored in that property, and then the name and then the value stored in that property. And that's all inside of here. That's just this key uh, variable that we're creating each iteration of the loop. 
However, we could use destructuring if we wanted because this here returns an array. So we could destructure out the specific parts that we want. So we could structure out uh, the key and the value from there. Meaning that we could actually go ahead and console.log the value like such. Uh, throw a semicolon there. Clear that, hit run, and we get name Ryan age 31. Pretty neat. A uh, couple things we want to also look at here is if we wanted to clear, or sorry, first of all, let's delete first. If we want to delete a property, uh, it's as straightforward as using the delete keyword. So we could say person dot delete. Uh, yeah. And we could say delete the name property. Actually, you know what we should do? Let's go back here. Let's make that for loop still appear there. And we'll delete the property Oop. there so that we don't have it anymore. Uh, and you have to spell delete, correct, of course, delete, like that. So now we just have the age property left. Uh, and if we wanted to clear everything, everything out of here, we could just use clear. And this method will just completely empty our, um, our map. So that's pretty neat. Uh, and most of these methods also hold for sets. So let me just grab some code real quick uh, so I don't have to type this again. Here we go. So we have this list of shopping items, uh, milk, bread, cheese, chips, milk, peaches. We set this new variable, we're calling it unique shopping items, and we set a new set I've said set too many times here, but we, we use uh, create a new set and we pass in these items inside of there. We could just put this inside of there if we wanted, but we're just using this. Now, one thing I mentioned earlier, uh, if you didn't catch it, is that a set is a set of unique values. You'll notice that the shopping items list, milk, bread, cheese, chips, milk, it has two milks in it. Uh, and that's fine, I guess, but like maybe we only want a list of unique values. We don't want to grab milk twice, right? That would be too much. The milk would go sour and we have some food waste. So if we pass these values to a set, the set will actually only provide us back the unique value. So it'll actually remove one of these milks. And I think it'll remove the second milk. That's pretty neat. Uh, in the past, you've had to use stuff like uh, underscores, unique method and stuff like that. Or you'd have to, again, write your own uh, for loop, whatever you want to do to kind of like check each value and be like, does this already exist? If it does, skip it. So how would we iterate through this? Well, uh, just like a map, there is a for each method. So we could say unique. I'm just going to copy this because it's a really long uh, variable name, unique dot for each and it gets past a couple of things. Actually, sorry, it doesn't get past a couple of things. That's the map that gets past a couple of things. This just gets past one thing. In this case, it's just the value. So if we just console.log value here, we will see that it actually just has milk, bread, cheese, chips, and peaches. Notice that it's completely skipped the milk uh, the second time around. That's amazing, that's really cool. Uh, one thing that I uh, hadn't shown you yet in the map is that uh, similar to, uh, or sorry, in maps and sets, what you can do is you can have different values or different uh, objects or different functions as the values. Uh, the cool thing about a map is say I have const person equals like an object like that and I go const students equals new map. So I should probably throw a name in here. Oops. And I go uh, students dot set uh, person, and I'll say I don't know class one. Like you can actually store as a, a key an object inside of here. So if we had multiple objects inside of sets that actually were duplicates, we could actually. Uh, take out the uh, the duplicates and return only the unique ones. It's pretty cool. Um, so also with sets, we're able to uh, enumerate through them uh, the same ways. This one's kind of weird because a lot of the methods are going to do pretty much the same things. So there is a for of loop. So for of let, let's say value of, and then we're going to have, I'm just going to copy this again, unique shopping items. And then 
this is just the set, so how do we actually get through here? Because remember, a for of loop requires the iterator uh, object to be able to loop through it. So what we can use is the dot values method. And this one makes a lot of sense because there are no keys uh, for a, um, a set, it's just values. So if we just show the values, we can get the same thing again. I'll clear that so you can see that it's just the one. Uh, but it does also implement a keys property or a keys method. Uh, oddly enough, this is, does the exact same thing as values. It just returns the values because there are no keys. It's just the value. Uh, it also has an entries uh, method. But as you guessed it, there are no keys or values. So you get these weird arrays that are just uh, for each one of the items inside of the set. It's milk, milk, bread, red, red, red. Like it's just the same values across the board. Um, pretty weird, but uh, I'm sure there's a reason for implementing all of those. So um, just like a, uh, actually not person, it's going to be unique shopping items. Just like a map, we can delete elements. So I could delete the, uh, well, let's delete milk from there. And we could actually, you know what, I keep doing that. We need this back. We'll remove that. We'll copy that and we'll delete uh, delete milk and what you'll see is that we'll just get bread cheese chips and peaches back uh, if we wanted to clear the the set we could also go ahead and use the clear method as well and then it's just if we clear this you'll see that there's nothing nothing at all there it's pretty neat there are two alternatives. There are two other uh, uh, types of a map and a set, and they're called weak maps and weak sets. Uh, I'm not going to go over them here. Uh, you'll have to check out my book or just Google around to find out a little bit more about those. Um, but there was an article that I mentioned earlier. So there's this article um, by Pony Fu. Uh, here we go. Oops, I moved that screen around a bit there. That should be good. Uh, PonyFu that has this great section here. Where is it? Uh, hash maps in the DOM. So this is the uh, ES6 maps in depth section. And basically, instead of going over and just kind of like uh, copying what he talks about here, I'm just going to point you to here. So this is a little way of uh, caching DOM elements uh, so that you don't kind of like keep looking them up over and over again. Uh, so if you're working on a really large application or even not a that large application, a small application, uh, and you want to make sure that you're being as performant as possible, uh, caching your elements is going to be really important. And this kind of uses a map to implement a, a way of doing that where they set the elements that you find. So these are, are objects that are set into the, the value there. And then you can store uh, your data and then you can get them back again based on that same element, that same object, and you can delete it uh, the same way as well. It's pretty neat stuff, really cool. Um, yeah, so that's just a quick look at map and set. Hope you learned a little uh, bit here and there. Uh, a couple things, so I'm gonna be releasing my book if you are watching this on Wednesday. Hopefully I've released it on Tuesday. Uh, it's an early access version. So what that means is that it is going to be um, uh, Five of the seven chapters, or seven, sorry, uh, seventeen of the twenty-two chapters hasn't been completed. Haven't been completed yet. Um, this table of contents on the site currently is a little bit out of date, um, but pretty much everything is done, ready to, for you to to get into it, get reading, uh, maybe just review some of the stuff we've talked about already. I'm um, really excited about that. Second, uh, after I'm done this Let's Learn ES6 uh, series, I think I only have generators, uh, proxies, and symbols left to do. Uh, so we're almost done. Once I'm done this Let's Learn ES6 series, uh, I'm going to start a new series called Let's Code Along. It's going to be a lot more informal. Uh, the videos might be a little bit longer, but the whole idea is that I'm going to take really kind of fun little projects and we're going to go from start to finish. We're going to start, uh, you know, scaffolding the project, getting into it. Uh, I'll have a fair idea of where we're going to go with it, but we're just going to kind of play around and it'll be fun uh, for you and fun for me, hopefully. So um, other than that, check out letslearnes6.com. Uh, please take a look at the book and I'll see you soon. Bye.